Sutras is considered as the practical school of Indian philosophy, whatever is being said here, you can put it to experiment. This is not an evidence-based system. Here, you are the experiment and you are the evidence. Whatever is being said here, it's like a hypothesis. You apply it to yourself and you, you experience and discover the truth of it. This is how Yoga Sutra has to be explored. That's why it's called scientific. That's why it's called a manual. Now, yoga anushasana means discipline and anushasana means a self-imposed discipline. This is not something which somebody else is forcing on me. This is something that I take on myself. So this word atha is very significant. In the now, what is happening to people? Everybody is trying to find happiness. Why are we working? We are earning money just so that we can be happy. We can live comfortably, isn't it? I got married because I thought I'll, I'll have a happier life. I had children. Why? Because I want to be happy, isn't it? I'm going on this travel. Why? Because it will increase my happiness quotient. Whatever we are doing, we are doing it towards happiness, isn't it? So in the now, everybody is trying to find fulfillment. Does it happen with all of you? Have you observed this? Whatever you set out to achieve, you said, okay, you know, I find this job, I'll find my nirvana. I have this much bank balance, I'll be so happy. This is the nature of human being. We, we keep thinking that we are going to get fulfilled by things that we acquire in the world or in samstara but it is not going to bring you fulfillment and if you have come to such a point where you feel that you have tried all the things that people or you know your parents told you you know you do this you work hard you study and you will have a good job you'll have a good life still if it has not fulfilled you and you've come to a point where it's making you restless and frustrated saying what is the point of all this why am i not in a state of permanent happiness then you have come to yoga then you are ready for yoga. If you still think that you can find happiness, permanent happiness and joy in the world, in samsara, through external sources, then it is not time for yoga. But once you have come to a point where there is an intelligence that is telling you, I tried everything, it's not working. There has to be something else. Then yoga. You look at Buddha. It takes a little bit of intelligence to not experience everything yourself, but observe around you. Through other people's experiences also you can learn. You don't have to put yourself through every experience to understand the nature of life. Look at Buddha. He saw one old man, one sick man, one dying man and one sannyasi. And in that moment he said, what is the point of this kingdom? He said, is this marriage, is this child going to bring me ultimate happiness? If this is what is going to happen to me also, I'm also going to become old, I will also become sick, I will also die. Then what is the point of life? If I have just been born to die, what is the purpose? What am I doing? And that was enough for him to leave everything, to leave an empire, to leave his wife, child and go in search of truth. Can you imagine the longing that must have been in that man? to do something like this from this so pratyaksh anumanagama pramanani right perception arises from direct observation inference and testimony from scriptures or wisdom text so the mind wants to know whether i'm right or not the mind wants to be in right knowledge how do you know something how can you know anything you know something because i have seen it directly with my eyes pratyaksh it's in front of me yeah you do. It's right there in front of me. This is called Pratyaksh. Anumana. We can also infer, right? We can infer something if we don't know directly. For example, if I uh, give this example, I walk into a room and I see paper plates, I, uh, maybe some party caps. I can infer that there must have been a party here. There must have been people here who were, um, who were having a celebration. This is inference. Through this also, I can know. My mind can know something that is right and the third is testimony so for example i give this example you know you move to a new country and uh, now you have to learn driving some new rules we look to the authority so you go you know you go through your driving test uh, the dmv so you look to authority for right knowledge okay how should i drive here i should drive in this lane you will be in the right knowing you will know correctly so these are the three ways in our normal materialistic worldly life we can apply this please remember yoga sutras is a moksha shastra 
it's a shastra on liberation now beyond senses knowing what is right so you remember in the ancient times it was believed that the earth was flat it was believed earth is flat galileo was the first one who said no earth is round but uh he was imprisoned for having said this why he said, and what were people's argument against this what was the church's argument against this what was the society's argument they said pratyaksh you see how can you say the earth is round you just see it with your eyes does it look round to you now in your limited capacity you will never see the roundness of the earth right you're standing how far can you see anuman inference if you are saying that the earth is round let me keep walking on the earth i should fall off no why don't i fall off so you are wrong what you are saying is wrong third agama in those times in galileo's time the the church was the authority okay whatever the church said that passed and the authorities in the church claim the earth is flat and it had to be so so he was going against authority and because of all this he was put in house imprisonment look at this the day man learned to fly you were here your perception was here and you were looking at something from here the day you raised the day you learned to fly you saw everything that galileo said was right and it was all pratyaksh the earth was round so to know something truly in its absolute reality not by sense perception if you work on this by sense perception you will not know even in the materialistic world beyond a point senses will not help you even the earth which is part of our world okay science you will not know if you do not transcend your limitations in some way that is why every day try to transcend a limitation a little bit and a little bit that's why most of us go to yoga class also for this no because when we do self practice i stay in my comfort zone if i'm in the class my teacher will send me five more breaths six more breaths it doesn't mean you you're not killing yourself but you are very in great awareness you're slightly expanding the boundaries of your existence this is important the path of yoga is expand to such a degree that you obliterate the boundaries of your existence and your true nature simply it's an effulgent outpouring so beyond the senses also there is a way of knowing now i'm let's let's look at this so you are in a dark room okay and i am also in that room with you okay and but you don't know who is there five people are there 10 people are there if you need to see me or you need to see somebody else you need a light to be switched on and you need to see me no if i ask you if you were asked is there anybody in this room there could be 100 people there but you don't know you can't see it's pitch dark so you don't know you need a light to see that but if you are in a dark room and i ask you are you there you know you are there isn't it there is no outside light you don't know this because you open your eyes and you see yourself isn't it you just know that you are there how do you know how do you know so when we are saying if you say that pratyaksh means i can only see with my eyes and therefore i will know that is a very poor and limited way of looking at life that is not how you know you will know those things in the external dimension that is okay in the worldly life samsara samsara is all this okay samsara you will know by your by your eyes but yourself you don't know by your eyes you know it by something else what is that thing how do i know that i am there i know it is self evidently true isn't you do i have to prove to you that i am there no i don't have to prove to you i know i am there does the mind have the capacity for right knowing without using physical senses Yes on the spiritual path this is what is needed you don't need your gyan indriyas to see yourself okay it is that's why we saying shut your eyes and sit if you want to see yourself if uh so it's like this mind has a capacity for right knowledge it is possible for the mind to know correctly and there is a switch on button inside our mind just to put it in a way that we can understand this is called pramana okay how do we know something pramana this is the right center pramana means the right center self evidently true i know you don't have to show me so if you put this button on you become established in right knowledge and only that which is right gets revealed to you it's a self revelation inside you without this pramana this right center working within you whatever you know will be wrong 
if the right center does not work the mind has two centers it has a right center it has a wrong center okay if the right center is functioning within you you will whatever you know will be right you your mind can be on right knowledge it can be functioning from the right center but your mind can also be in the wrong center where whatever you see it's like a distorted mirror now even if you put the perfect thing in front of it it will see incorrectly no so you go you are among friends your friend is not talking to you nicely now you think that oh i must have done something i must have said something he's not happy with me how do you know something else may have happened in their life situation you've heard of that story the man who is sitting on the bench in the park and his child is howling and crying somebody else comes to the park and he is like looking at him saying what is what is what kind of a father is he not even taking care of his child but that man is simply sitting quietly and letting the child cry through tantrums finally this man gets so irritated he goes and tells him please take care of your child just take him somewhere whatever he's making so much noise disturbing all of us our morning uh, meditation etc and this man says oh i'm so sorry his mother passed away yesterday we go around passing judgments on people thinking oh they are not they are like this they are not how do you know what's happening in their life what they are going through this is called wrong center functioning you think you know but you don't know this is called wrong center viparyaya whatever you see is mistaken who do not become a certain thing don't be so identified with i know be more identified with i don't know because the moment you say i know you have locked the gates how much can you know can you know everything in the world you cannot know no that which is not known will always be greater than that which is known so if you say i know you have locked you will never be open to new possibilities so the first thing for a seeker to say is i don't know and be willing to take that step into i don't know be willing to make that step into darkness and say i don't know okay fine let's see maybe maybe not this is very important so see there is this whole idea of skeptic and suspicious a skeptic person will say i don't know maybe maybe not a suspicious person will say bakwas past lifetimes also for a very long time in the western culture was like what nonsense are you talking this is it just if you talk like this today to a educated mind which only believes in that which is scientific and proven Brian Wise who wrote his book was so afraid to speak because he thought he would put his career online but he was beginning to see this and uh, he took the courage to do this if we become identified with what i know we will the mind will pass judgment and it will close itself i know this is all nonsense that it so it's a mind's capacity for wrong knowledge now people who have a wrong center even if they see the right thing their uh, you know they will see what is wrong they will go in a go in front of a man like buddha and they will sitting they will find faults even with them see see even krishna duryodhan could not see in krishna what arjun could see no it depends on your mind if your pramana if your right center is functioning you will see or you will at least be a skeptic and say i don't know and you will walk in a certain direction okay the mind wrong center means the mind has the capacity to pervert anything this is also a capacity of the mind switch the wrong center how do i build the right center how can someone know everything past present and future it is possible maharishi patanjali in his yoga sutras explains this in chapter 3 verse 16 that through the power of samyama divisions of time disappear and one becomes available to ultimate reality so osho in his commentary on uh, yoga sutras has explained this beautifully he says this is not a miracle it is just a law just like the law of gravitation like that when your consciousness rises these things will come to pass so osho explains this with a very beautiful example that helps us to understand this idea so for example you are sitting under a tree okay and there is a road in front of you that stretches in either direction and there is someone who is sitting on top of a tree and there is a car which is approaching say from 1 mile away you cannot see the car but the person who is sitting on top of the tree can see the car so the car is present for that person 
but it is in the future for you after some time the car comes in front of you you can see it the person sitting on top of the tree can see it so now the car has become present for both of you and then as the car goes further it disappears for you it becomes past for you but for the person sitting on top of the tree it is still present so it all depends upon how much your consciousness is rising if your consciousness is really high then these divisions of time past present and future disappear for you